Hang on, uh, I have to switch menu autofocus. Go. Okay, this is one of the, well, this is the second microphone I designed when I was at Rode Microphones. Right. This is a uh, dodgy prototype of the Rode NT3. And Still sold? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Like hotcakes, apparently. And it's got a number of salient features. We might uh, undo the hood and see what's behind that. Stole the virtues. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay. This, I don't know if you can zoom in on that. No, I can is the PCB, a very, very, very prototype PCB, right. <laughs> uh, where one of the things you can see is, uh, the, the salient things are, first of all, we are discussing the two large output capacitors. Mm -hmm. Those are the two large output capacitors. From memory there, I think about 270 microfarad. Are they bipolar? Uh, no, 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 they're, no. Perfe they're yeah. perfectly sane. <laughs> No need for lithium. Uh, <laughs> and there's a fair bit of circuitry on the back. There and is. in fact, we might even uh, kind of have a quick scribble of what I can remember of the circuit diagram for these. Yep. Because it's got a couple of novel features to it. Ooh, uh, awesome. And a couple of really, really boring features too. But Obviously. <laughs> uh, Inside, uh, oh, now this is going to make a mess of the microphone, I'm sure. First of all, if we take the top off, we can see the externally polarised yeah, 19 millimeter conden uh, condenser capsule. These rubber supports, uh, uh, a friend of mine designed those while we were both working at Rode microphones. The purpose of that particular shape is, of course, to allow mm -hmm. entry of sound from both the front and to oh. the rear of the yep. capsule because uh, it's a supercardioid capsule and we need sound to enter the rear. Of course. Uh, the, mind you, when we're talking about design mistakes, one of the uh, errors was I wanted these rubber supports, shock mounts, to be made of EPDM plastic, which has really good electrical properties. Right. Nah, Why they, is that? Uh, I wanted it to be a really good electrical insulator, but still squingy enough to act as a good shock absorber. Technical term. Squingy, yeah. yep. Now, we certainly got squingy plastic, but uh, in fact, I think it's a, a partially, uh, partially polymerised uh, mm -hmm. uh, PVC with uh, lots and lots of carbon black loading. Right. Guess what? It's conductive, yeah, isn't it? Uh -huh. Carbon. Yeah, when you yeah. Add the carbon tends to do that when you add it to things. Yeah. Uh, just to add insult to injury, it has a strong triboelectric effect <laughs> against the hot capsule wire that goes oh, down no. there. So any movement here oh, no. was causing crackle, crunch, crackle, crunch, crackle, crunch <laughs> and as it charged up. Our solution to the problem, incidentally, mm. was the Teflon wire that goes down the centre. Mm. Uh, we simply covered it in a piece of heat shrink. The heat shrink sticks to the Teflon, but has a relatively low <laughs> triboelectric effect against the uh, rubbery stuff. <laughs> ah, the things you learn. And this was designed as a handheld mic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we have a look down in the guts. So this is, even though it's a prototype, is still typical of the production? Uh, production one, or probably. They uh, it? There, there was finessing of this bit of plastic oh, right, okay. uh, that holds things. Oh, just as an aside, uh, you can see how that all lines yep. up. Okay, switch for switch, mm -hmm. idiot light for idiot light, and terminals down here for the batteries, mm -hmm. and three terminals in the centre that go down to the XLR connector at the rear. Yep. We will have a look at the circuit diagram for that later, but uh, I figured uh, having a look for some of the uh, the basic acoustic properties and basic mechanical properties of that, and to also illustrate a classic design error. <laughs> that almost looks like a lightsaber. Eh, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't make the vroom, vroom noise unless you're in a really strong magnetic field. Right. Uh, Was there any need to uh, gunk down those caps to stop? vibration and other, uh, no. other stuff, no? No, basically that's pinned in place so firmly by the that plastic oh, carrier. Oh, right, okay, uh, then you did that, they weren't going to flap. They're they going were, nowhere. <laughs> they, they weren't flapping in the breeze. Yeah. Not only no. that, but even if they did, uh, well, they wouldn't rattle 
and any vibration would not pass particularly well to the yeah, microphone. Right. Yeah. So let's get that back on. Now, 